Good. And we have two persons. We don't need to introduce them. So that's Pamod and Saurabh. It's also in the, in the room. Okay. So today, in this last session of day two, we have multiple presentation. We talk about climate health and one health. It's perfect. Good. So to start with, we have uh, Mr. Peto from uh, Ministry of uh, Natural Resources and Energy. So he will, environment, yes. Uh, Monry, that's what we call for short, short form. So if you can come around and present what Ministry of uh, Environment is doing in Laos. Hello. So good afternoon. Um, so I'm Peto Mokhamprao from Department of Meteorology and Meteorology in Laos. So I would like to present on how to make data monitoring and transmission in my country. So mostly in Monterey. So they have uh, like uh, many sectors are relevant to the climate, but for uh, the information is based on the image. So I just focus on the image to uh, do the and I just briefly, and I'm not going in very details. So to online, I will brief about the DMH organization and the rule function of the DMH, and also the uh, data monitoring and system, and data monitoring and transmission, and the last one is forecasting. So DMH is a one organization, it belongs to the uh, Ministry of Natural Resources, as we call it, Monterey. So, uh, it consists of six divisions, like administrative uh, finance and division, and climate and hydrometeorology division, hydrology division, and uh, hydrometeorology network, and earthquake division, uh, aviation division, and weather forecast and warning uh, division. So, I am working with uh, hydrology division. So mostly my duty is like to uh, modeling and data analysis for uh, water level forecasting and so like a flood forecasting. So the function of the DMH, uh, uh, DMH uh, usually uh, take part of the uh, like uh, survey installation and like uh, extended uh, hydrology and meteorology level station. And also uh, management and maintain of the station and improve uh, the meteorology direction. If, if some place or some station is broken or some equipment is shut down, uh, the image can go to the field and to the station and it still replace the equipment. And also monitor and collection the data from the station and evaluate the data to like to do data uh, control quality. And then we insert all the data to the database system. And for the corporation and with the others uh, organization, so we uh, uh, like a coordinate and cooperate with the uh, agency organization. Like uh, for us, example, like a uh, water resource uh, department and climate change department and at the other uh, research institute. And then especially the uh, Coordinate with the MRC because we got some uh, budget support from MRC and we monitor the all the station along the Big River. And we also exchange the data and information in hydrology and meteorology skill to the uh, the other uh, in, uh, education institute, especially the university and college or like a secondary school. Sometimes they came to the image and they would like to see. Uh, I'll look up the hydro material equipment and you can share them and explain to them. Yes. Yeah, these are. So now, TPH operates about 190 stations of the hydrology station, then 150 uh, climate station. But we still have like, 109 station, uh, like a manual station. So this station, we have to use uh, people to, uh, to manage uh, every day. So we just update about 84 station to be the automatic record. For the rest, we also have the 66 uh, manual station. 
and also just have the radical authorization about moving forward. And for the data collection method, so every day we have to uh, collect the data from the local. So this is from the manual station by WhatsApp group. If sometimes, so we get the data uh, at the 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. So sometimes like a, the weather condition is not very good and we cannot share by WhatsApp. So uh, we have to call them right to the local office and to get the data. And then after we got the data, we made the data quality control and check the data quality. And then we can share the data to the uh, hydropower tech company, then like a irrigation department and by email. And then we, after we got the data, we insert the data, some data belong to the Mekong River, uh, to the Hamlet system, and we can share this data to uh, MRC. And then after we got all the time, we make analysis and check the data quality. And if some time, uh, maybe heavy rain or some storm will uh, hit uh, some part of the low country, that we can share the information to the social media, like a TV or radio and newspaper. So like we also have, so this like a real time station, like automated station. So we have like, several, uh, donors to support us like Jaika, Korean, Chinese, and World Bank and so far. And then they have their own like a web page to log in and to access to the data. So now it's not integrated yet. And so this is just show only the page of the World Bank and so like a some station from the support from uh, Thai government to see. And also we have uh, like a flash flood monitoring system. So, but now we just finished only uh, installation only for basin in Lao, like a in the upper part of the country and to in the middle part. And then the system consists of the rainfall station and water level and the warning post. If uh, the heavy rain came and the water level is getting higher and higher until they uh, reach the water uh, level. So that the system will allow to the community to know that uh, maybe the water level will get higher and higher until they get flat, and then the community can move to the uh, safety place. So after that, then the last one is for forecasting. After we got all the data from local area, and then we insert to the statistical method uh, to analyze it to make forecasting, and we also I use the model. This is like a film a few model. Uh, this is a model is support from MRC, and then we run this model and model, and then combine with the uh, weather information uh, from the Japan and from Vietnam and from Korea, also from Thailand, to combine together, and and then we can after that if you are. Uh, some day uh, maybe if you don't hit the country, then we can report this information to the government, and the government can issue the official letter and send to the co uh, local community. Community, and after that, we issue the uh, weather information to the government, and we can share the information that by uh, to the social media like a radio newspaper and TV network and so we also post on the WhatsApp group and Facebook and also uh, I say like a live uh, forecasting by YouTube channel and yeah, that's all about my presentation. Thank you very much. Yes, yeah, so we take, <coughs> sorry, we take the question after the presentation um now like i'll invite uh, dr achella to uh, talk about what's happening with the the climate health initiative in lao uh, thank you john good afternoon everyone so i'm going it's going to be very quick i'm going to uh explain 
the activities we have planned by uh, as the WHO country office in collaboration with uh, other uh, stakeholders over the next five years. Recently, we received a grant from a Green Climate Fund uh, uh, for a project to be continued over the next five years. This in collaboration with uh, Save the Children. So this project overall uh, helped the uh, Lao government to achieve these uh, sustainable development goal. goals overall, like 3, 7, 6, and 13. I'm not going into details. So in this project, we have uh, four outcomes. Uh, I think for us, I think the second outcome is the most important. And uh, but let me start with the first outcome that is the the health systems uh, governance and leadership is uh, climate resilient. So with the government of Laos, uh, we develop health strategies, policies that incorporate uh, the threats presented by climate change and increase uh, increase climate climate resilience. So this this includes uh, the developing training materials, conducting training and trainings at both national and subnational levels. Then when it comes to the strengthening uh, health information systems, uh, integrating climate and weather data into the the routine uh, health information systems. Uh, as you have heard from uh, Dr. Chancellor. This morning in Laos, we have uh, 10 years old, uh, well-established DHIS2 based national health management information system. I'm not going into details because John will explain uh, in his presentation more technical details. Uh, currently, we have integrated uh, rainfall and temperature data into the national HMIS and uh, already we have uh, disease data, for example, dengue, diarrhea, etc. So basically, we are trying to integrate this data into one system and uh, using uh, uh, integrating a system called EVOS, early warning, and early warning system, and uh, try to uh, predict uh, diseases using. Uh, R codes. So, and uh, make, make the health system uh, resilient to uh, climate sensitive diseases. Uh, prevention, uh, diagnosis, and better management of uh, climate sensitive uh, diseases using uh, integrated data. So, that, that is basically the main. Uh, uh, outcome. Then we are we are trying to integrate other indicators like such as wash water and uh, water sanitation and uh, hygiene, for example. So this is the basic overall overall uh, plan for the outcomes for next five years. So I'm not. This is project will be starting next year. Uh, I'm not going into details because we are still like in the in the planning process for the the detailed activities. And I think John will uh, present how we did this with the integration between uh, DHIS2 and EVOS. Thank you. Thanks, John. Thank you, Dr. Okay, um, now like we heard about the, the what Ministry of uh, Environment is doing, so how they are collecting the data, even though like it's only focusing on the hydrology, but they have multiple different divisions. Um, in many countries, we will have many different uh, departments and divisions who are collecting weather data, which is not only when we just talk about weather data, climate, okay, good temperature, that's fine. And then the rainfall, okay. What about the air quality? But the problem is air quality is in other division. 
So we need to first identify which are all the key stakeholders are there so that like we can try to negotiate with them, work with them and to see like how best we can get their data and also co correlate what we think are. I'm stealing a few of the slides from uh, Chancellor. This is the, the slide which is showed in the morning where we just say in Lao we have multiple systems where they're now trying to integrate all the different pro health programs in the Ministry of Health. But now they are moving ahead, not only focusing on only on the health, but like the what are other things are related. So this is the something like what we've been trying to, to work with, with the Ministry of Health and also with the WHO Lao team to try to build some kind of modeling. First thing is, is uh, the impact of climate change, is it like, we all know there is climate change is happening, right? But does it affect the health? So that's why like we, we can always see like in the context of plow, the rainy season is getting shorter and more intensive. We can see here, every day we are ra uh, getting rain, but in Sri Lanka, you can like, um, I guess like you can also support me if it is right or wrong. The rainy season should have been ended. This is a dry season, but we are still having rain. So there is something happening around. And then how does it affect the all the, the our health side prediction and other things? That's something which we want to try to look at. And when it is dry season, it's really, really hot and warmer and humid. So that's also like something which we need to try to, to work with. So first we just saw what we have in, in DHI store in any countries. In Lao, we had all the disease surveillance data from long time. We had by the villages and all different things. I'll explain to you. I'll show a few of the demo when I'm starting with it. But like here, like we had a good disease surveillance data in DHRs too, which is collected at the village level. So the health worker is collecting and they're also collecting, okay, this disease happened in this particular village. In Lao, each and every village is mapped to the GPS point so that like we can analyze those data, not only by the health facility, but also by the villages. So saying which villages has more dengue cases or which villages has more diarrhea or more bites. So they have this is surveillance form, which has been imported or worked with um, multiple departments like PSI, um, NCLE department, and also with WHO. So they are all collaborating together to implement one system, which is in DHIS2, but training, the support, looking at the data quality is not only belongs to Ministry of Health, but also with other departments. That's how we can try to make the good data for disease surveillance. That has been established, has been working through. So uh, what we try to do, like to just to show, is there any correlation between weather data and the um, diseases? So we took dengue as one of the things because like it's been spreading quite a lot. Last year, the dengue cases was in the, in Vinchen capital because like even in like in Hanoi and all, most of the capital has dengue. But this year it was very different. Dengue didn't happen in a, uh, in the Vinchen capital. It was in the neighboring province. I just say why it was supposed to. We know that okay, there is a dengue season. We all know so these are these are the months for the dengue season. But the places were changing. So these are something which we can try to uh, we're trying to predict and try to just see this one up. So what we did was just to uh, work with um, a University of Gothenburg in Sweden. So they were created a model called Ewan. They have developed their researchers. So they developed a tool based in our language, where if you feed in all the disease surveillance data, plus the climate data, the rainfall and the min and max, the temperature, and then it will predict, these are all the, the possibility what happens. So you might get dengue in these particular places and all. So we want to try to test that model. So for doing that one, first we went to, to Monterey and say, can you please give us all your weather data? So then they gave us the, all the CSV file with list of all the different things for their weather station. Then we, we imported all the data into DHS2. In DHS2, we already had the, the daily cases of the dengue and everything. So then we matched by day. Every day we matched the, the cycle and all the things. I'll show you that one up. And then we just see like what is the correlationship we can derive or not derive. So for doing that, so what we did was DHIS2 health worker is collecting all the disease surveillance data. 
And then like we took the meteorological data and imported into DHIS2. And then from DHIS2, we send this file to the E1 system, which does the, all the prediction, modeling, and all the things. And then we put it back, the output of that the system into DHIS2 so that like we can analyze not only we, but like many people can analyze the data. Because one of the main thing, it should not be only at the higher level, but also at the local level where the people can able to analyze different types of data. So this is what we've been trying to do. And then also created some kind of prediction. Like in DHIS2, we have this notification, all things like if you have that we can try to deal with them. So these are some of the charts. It does not look so good here, but like during the, the demo, like it looks fine. Orumsa is one of the province. So it is based on by different provinces what we created. And this was like rainfall, temperature, and dengue data in the same screen. And this is was the one of the output from the E1. So then like we get like all these things uh, model, and then like we can just see how best we can try to include and where are all the different places dengue outbreak can happen. The, this model is not, we are not saying this is the only model. Then like when we showed this one, there was also one other group called Haya. They were using the Google satellite and other things, and they were also developing their own predicting model. So when we come around to, to this place, so DHS2 has all the data, but we can have not one model, but multiple model from different different places. The model is just the prediction, right? So sometimes this model might be working, sometimes that model will be working. So we need to work with the universities and the places to find multiple models. And maybe this one works for Dengue, but not for Sari. So we need to make sure like how are the different diseases are working and which model is good in predicting the, the accurate uh, um, the data. Okay, I'm just going very quick. So this was the testing. So how this will help? So we can try to just say whenever we have some kind of this diseases and all things, we can actually tell them, uh, give more supplies, you take more ORS, just especially for the heat waves or like the, the air quality and all different things we can try to include. So, and also with the, the diarrhea, we can, the health work can be prepared well. So those are different things what we can try to do. And also with the education people, we can try to do it. So now let me do a quick demo. Hopefully it works. The first thing what we have to do when we go to DHS2 is to check whether we have logged in or not. Okay, so logged in, perfect. Oh. What's happening now? Okay, can you see my screen? Okay. So I was just like checking if I was logged in. Yes. So this is the, the output, what we have uh, through in DHRS2. So like if we just like see around here, this is for the whole law PDR where like the lines are the, the rainfall and the top one is the temperature. So we took it from like 19 till uh, 2022. So 19, 20, 21, 22, four years data. So we try to put it in. And then the, all the lines are the, the um, uh, dengue cases. So this was like when we started collecting the data and all different things. And if you see, uh, dengue was not so much in 2021. But in 2022, it started really increase. So that's also something which we can try to just see. So that's what's for the law for the overall. And then we try to drill down to different um, province. So this is Sinemichan capital. And then we go around. So it's the same in um, um, Samanaket and Udumsai. If you see in Udumsai, oops, Udumsai, there were dengue cases many years. But like if you go for capital and all, it was not. So that's why like it can keep on changing. So we need to, this is only at the province level, but if you have good data, even the weather fall data and other things at the health facility or the district, so then we can do much more. So right now, this was just a proof of concept that like there is a correlation shift and there are all the different things and how best we can try to, to work. To you. Okay, this is the other things. So in DHIS2, like I guess like um, tomorrow, Austin will also show a few of the things about the maps. Uh, how do I drag this one down? Okay. 
So I want to show you to you um, this one, what's happening in Lao. So these are all the dengue cases, what's there. So like this is not the location of the health facility, but location of where it happened. Because we mapped all the villages. So when the people are reporting, what they're reporting is they're selecting the where the, the person is from, which province, which district, and which villages. When they select the villages, those points are linked around here. And these are, are not where the health facilities are, but actually where the cases are. And then in DHS too, like, you know, like we can always link with the Google Earth Engine, right? So when we try to do. So like here, if we just see, we have uh, elevation, temperature, land cover, uh, and the population. So all those things layer, we can try to overlay on our things. So right now, what the map you are seeing around is is the Lao and then the dengue cases. And these are all the uh, the perspiration. Yeah, so now like, let me just say, we don't want to do that. So I'll just like close and I'll just see the temp uh, temperature. Okay, so just a bit drill down a bit more. So like here, when you right click for any place, let's just go much more detail. Let's just see here, show the temperature. So like here, like you can try to just see what was the temperature on that particular day when the dengue happened. We need to also uh, improve our analysis techniques, but like at least like we have some things, but like the University of Foster, the global team are working very closely to, to have more modeling and more easier way to do the cross uh, correlation. Okay, so if you want, we can also, it will give you all this. All this data is not in DHRS. It is taken directly from the, the Google. So when you try to, in your DHRS, you can set up the Google, uh, the uh, the URL, which um, Austin will show tomorrow. Then like you can get all this data for free. And if you're the Ministry of Health, so you get it for completely free. And then you can use all different kind of analysis. You can also see uh, latitude, longitude, land cover you can also include uh, like say precipitation so like here you can also see the the whole data so all those things are coming from other places so we have this one like two three years back already but like we need to start trying to use these features not only just collect the data but also try to just see these are all the tools what we have in our hand but like we need to, like just like Jan was saying, how do we use the data? This is also the tools to use the data for our own purposes. Okay. So let me, you can also include elevation. That's also something which we can try to do, especially for if it's too high, that like there is no dengue cases or is it cases. You can also use the land cover. Like for example, this is when we are talking about dengue right so then like we can just say so these are all the places i'll hide this and put on the land cover so these are all the data which is you are getting it from the place so then we can just say let's just see this area south So if we have a very good uh, uh, internet, then you can get like even more details. You can also just see, drill down <laughs> very close. Let me just say, you get the, the, the whole details. What are all the different things? What's the hectares and everything for that particular place? Let me... This one is also something which you already have, the organ profile, where you can just see what kind of facilities and all things you have. And let's show the, the data also. So these are all the different details which you can try to just see. So and these all these details you can get it more more easily. Okay. So I'm not going to go around to too much details, but you can try to add on and try to see how best we can try to, to analyze this data. 
Okay, so there are two things. One way is import all the climate data into DHS too, so that like we can try to have this modeling. Then the other one is use the, the Google one, which we are showing on here, so that like you can try to deal with all the, uh, in the raster way, image itself. So there are two different variations. This one, we don't know how to predict yet. Maybe beyond the person who's developed this app can like, he's been working very closely, try to see how best we can try to use different types of data so that like we can make better decision. Yeah, so with this one, like I'm done. Now I'll, hand oh, one more thing before I leave. So Lao has got uh, funding, um, 2.8 million something, 2.8 million dollar for including climate and health, 28, sorry, 28 million, 28.2 million. Yeah. Small grant according to the things. Yeah, so these are all, this is already online. So now like what we were trying to do is to work very closely with Ministry of um, uh, Environment and the Health so that like we can try to work on. So there are needs to improve and collaborate, but like we've been writing, we've been doing this one for the last two years, showing them that it's working. And then we need to have an MOU between the two different departments, also maybe food and the agriculture department so that like we can collaborate very good. I also want to show you one other uh, issue, like which was very nice when we visited uh, the Monterey office. So these are all the weather station, which already we got from uh, in the morning. So what they have done in Lao is to have this, this is for everyone. Anyone can uh, in Lao can download this app, which gives the weather forecast and just say, what is good for agriculture or farming? So many countries have already been done that one. So it's very good way. So this app, like what we are thinking, if we can identify key things, then we can just say, this is a dengue season coming. Please make sure you have the mosquito nets and all different things. Please don't open the or don't leave the, the water uh, things. So here, like they are giving up the advisor for farming. So we can also give advice saying that this particular time there will be heat wave, make sure that you drink more water. So, and this is for the livestock, the animal and all things based on things. So they worked very closely with um, the agriculture department and they have made co-relationship between climate and agriculture. So now what we need to try to also do is to include health. Agriculture, if it's affected, then like we also have nutrition and other things what you can try to include up. So these are some kind of factors what we've been trying to just see and see then how best we can try to include all the things up. Okay, so now I hand over to, to Ula to explain what University of Oslo is, is doing on the climate change. Thanks, John. Yeah. Um... So I think we've seen through the screen climate fund that there's a lot of interest. Uh, we were approached by uh, another foundation, the Welcome Trust in the UK, which is a big charity foundation about a year ago. Uh, they had seen the impact of the HS2 and the scale of the HS2 across so many ministries of health in the world uh, and wanted to invest, invest in climate and health and saw that there's an opportunity uh, to work with the DHS2 platform to see how you can integrate very, you know, very similar objectives to what we saw from Lao. If you can integrate uh, weather climate data in DHS2, then you can reach um, health workers and health managers um, that can make decisions on, on climate and health. Um, so this is an eight year project. They granted us funding for two years. So we have basically two years to prove that this is a good concept. Uh, and that means that we need results at country level. Um, so we are working quite actively with all the his groups, with potential countries, um, to try to innovate and, and see how we can support uh, these objectives uh, through the DHS2 platform. We also work with a lot of partners that can add value to the platform. You saw the example from Lao, where they worked with the University in Gothenburg on this modeling. We have... Uh, 
experts on, on data modeling and, and climate and health modeling in, in Barcelona Supercomputing Center. We have a machine learning group at the University of Oslo that will be engaged and we'll try to, to bring all these experts together to see how we can develop tools that can be applicable across countries and also then bring all this learning from all these pilot countries together and then try to come up with uh, something that's generic and shareable and kind of follow the same principles as we do with HS2. So this will include, of course, to make climate data available in the HIS. And you know, there is some there already, but I think we can do a lot more. But I think we need to find out uh, what are the needs. Huh? John mentioned, you know, we need to find out what this what data and what information products decision makers need at different levels to be able to, to act on this data. And I think that's something we need to do with all of you, with the countries, um, by working uh, with the local experts. So I think we've, we've identified a few different use cases. I think most of them have been mentioned already. Uh, and the, the idea is to overall look at, um, you know, the different diseases and health programs that are affected by climate change. Obvious one is around the early warning systems for climate sensitive infectious diseases. We saw dengue mentioned in Laos. There's a similar project that's been running for a few years in Mozambique, looking at malaria, but but very similar kind of type of approach where you you bring the weather data and all the climate data together with the historical malaria cases, you run models, and then you can predict and send back to DHS2 uh, information on districts where there are potential outbreaks of malaria in the coming month, for example. And I think that's you know, those are kind of proof of concept that we need to take further. We need to see how we can improve it, make it more readily available for, for other countries. Another uh, use case is to look at uh, um, droughts and how that affects farming. Uh, so we mentioned agriculture, but then of course there's a link between the food security, food production, and the nutrition programs, which also affects the, the health programs. So that's another one. And then at the bottom here, where we listed a few other kind of examples that we mentioned in the proposal to welcome fund, you can look at early warning systems for floods, heat waves, Cyclones is extreme weather events that will affect uh, health programs one way or another and can help to prepare um, to meet these challenges. Air pollution and respiratory diseases is another kind of link that's potential to look into. Basically, it's quite open in this Welcome Trust project what, what the linkages are, but it's about um, supporting the ministries of health and health managers to, to make their health system more resilient to climate change. Yeah, so what, what does this mean? We need to, to work together uh, with multiple countries. Uh, we need to understand the use cases better, their information needs better. We need to engage stakeholders, not just in the ministries of health, but also in other government entities and local universities. We need to work with you know local uh, institutes of meteorology or other government bodies that manage the climate data. And then we need to pilot uh, innovative solutions. There is no way that Austin and his team can develop a lot of core functionality and release them in time for this, you know, rapid uh, innovations, but a lot of customizations that we can do locally. And then eventually we can bring this into the core uh, software and then more available to across all countries that are interested. So this means really kind of working on the action research approach that Jörn talked about yesterday, linking researchers, implementers and developers locally across countries uh, and also bring in expertise from various global partners and then rapidly share what we learn across across the his groups across countries so that we can uh, move fast together that's basically it thank you i don't know austin if you want to add anything more from the technology perspective what the plans are do we have a Is where the health data is in, in 
analysis that we can we're just trying to bring in additional sources of data to the to be able to triangulate uh, correlate to define that information with the health information and then also to get some of that health information into models to do predictions where it can combine with very high resolution quantity data from local weather data from global data products like that uh, is like for example and then the others, you kind of have a lot of sophisticated models that have to be done there. And then during back in the data, this is where it can be used for action to actually improve the health system. So using that to, to predict things, to identify potential for stockouts or uh, health earnings, such as health damage. It's a really, really exciting opportunity. And it's not, uh, it's not like many, many years down the road for the HS2 functionality in that yeah. area. It's, Using what's already there, yeah. the software and data, and then yeah, having a lot of innovations around it to, to sell it. And then maybe we should mention that uh, in, in terms of kind of announcing this work, is it COP28 in Dubai? Or COP29? 29? 29? <laughs> yeah. The, the yeah. Next, uh, yeah the parties, so the, the... In December in Dubai. Uh, Welcome, we'll, uh, um, Digital Square uh, will launch this project. And there's a, uh, for the first time, I think, a dedicated health day linked to the COP uh, meeting. So a yeah. lot of emphasis on this, also from WHO Global. Yeah, I believe there's actually even, uh, yeah, there's a number of things going on yeah. around that, promoting the climate and uh, as a, a factor for health. And, mm. and that also drives engagement in the climate conversation. Good. So um, now let's just uh, hear from uh, Nepal. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you very much for this opportunity. It's really insightful presentations from the many different worlds that are in the world. In the context of the topic, all of them, it's very important to find the one. The past few years have uh, really shown how vulnerable we are, especially with the uh, massive outbreak of COVID that happened uh, in years back in the category. And this year is how uh, we were expecting it in the category that there's a massive outbreak in the East Department from uh, with the climate events. So uh, the recent years, uh, we are looking at also the bonds that we can put in the finance system. As academic partners, uh, we are trying to reach these policies and also one most challenging for us in the country is the capacity to do these types of things. So, uh, so we recently launched the Texas Global Warming Force for the first time in collaboration with the Government of the Office and the Office of the Office. Uh, and uh, we also launched a massive security plan in the past few years. I think it was the first one. So I think uh, one of the most important things uh, for the next uh, step to materialize this is, of course, uh, to plan the grand national state, but also. Uh, create uh, small models of success uh, in a more specific level, a province level, uh, so that we can help the industry, the industry, and also the government about the industry. And the second thing, I think that we are going to do much more to think of the fact that we need to get a lot of that activity. So we really need to be a good level of that. And we're also launching uh, the first one, this uh, is one of the functions, of course. Uh, uh, in February, the of the business of also in the technology industry. So, a lot of things are coming together. Uh, this from the two of them, who else is the one of the works that are done in Dubai. And uh, I'm very interested by the program we're talking about. And we have also started doing a supportive works around uh, how communities can uh, participate uh, in the survey system. It's one of the most important targets in all the states in the So, we have the database that we have to this uh, resource data. We do it from wherever we get uh, this database. Uh, not all of these uh, cases are 
for the whole country. Then we are overburdening our health workers. So we can try to identify in this area, it will be good to collect this business data. In this area, we don't have to do that one because there is no real threat on that area. So, but we have to, when we at the national level or the regional when we are telling the Ministry of Health, we just say you should collect this data. Then they will say they will include in their registers and all things so that all the health workers in the whole country are collecting that. That doesn't make any sense, right? So those are some things which we can try to work with. Sir, as the EV from Lunar Firm Project surveillance system, I connect, I use my unit to use to collect the data for HIV, AIDS, tuberculosis, and as well as malaria at one unit. And that is called the common management unit for Pakistan. So I know that during the recent project we took in the key provinces of Pakistan, the malaria is in race to six poles. So, and those rays were not um, the routine rays. So, this happens, and we know that there is a demand source of data source for the whole country at that, that, uh, some national levels, uh, I mean, uh, and the district and region and uh, on top levels, coming and consolidating the monthlies, and that should be the lab data. And on that data, we can do a model. Yes. Uh, so they, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, just a comment. I mean, um, I have been discussing with uh, you know, Dr. Vishal and a uh, number of people about uh, how we can discuss about the factor this pandemic. We do have a lot of that. It's better than this. It's a matter of how to change the people on the place to get them at which the time it will be. And at the top of the chart, we just mentioned that we talk kind of uh, the protecting area is uh, more um, than in Pakistan. Uh, we also, during this time, we also talk a lot of the people who are living by the idea of the people who are there. So, to take four, five phones, they can be used also. So I guess um, it's a matter of how we uh, collect that data if we want to get that and make an information. So that's a big question for all of us. That's a big question to see research on it and how to make the best we can. Good. Any questions? Okay. Before we move to the One Health, I want to ask how many people are using DHRS2? Yeah, using DHIS2, yes. So how many DHIS2 instance has these layers? The population density, the elevation, which you are subscribed to. So all these things are coming from the Google, not stored in DHIS2 at all. But what you have tried to do is to subscribe. Just one email, they're very, um, they quickly reply. Within a day, they will get all the things. <laughs> okay, but you, you have a bigger group, it's fine. So anyway, like, I'm not going to show how to do it, that Austin will just say. So tomorrow, if you want to see how you want to configure, attend Austin session. So I'm promoting your session now. <laughs> Okay, please make sure that like, you have, these are all the things. The first thing is it's, you, you have this tool, generic tool included. The second one is this modeling one. That's different. You have to talk to your different people, get the actual data. That requires a bit of effort. This one is just a couple of email and configuration. That's all. One person can sit down for a few minutes and fix all the things. Then you can get all this data. And then you can try to analyze how things are, right? Click and see see on the visualization what's happening. And then like we can ask, okay, this is not working, that is not working. Because beyond, we have this uh, map guy, which uh, Austin will just say, some, we can also give, I want to see this kind of data, this kind of data, this kind of visualization. Yeah, uh, Austin, you want to yeah. no. 
Um, I did just want to say on this front that uh, one of the for the maps application in GSPS is a big part of climate and climate impact as well. And obviously we have the yeah. mapping functionality in GSPS too. Uh, but one of the, the areas that we're really looking into now is there these are very powerful layers, but they're just for the, the tip of the iceberg, too much of a content fund, but for uh, what Google Earth Engine and other global data products can really do, right? So there's, there's so much data out there uh, and so much processing and modeling capabilities um, that we can tap into within the two and make really make that data and that capability is really accessible to people that are using mapping data. This is going to become the, I'll talk, talk more about this from it. DJ2 is intended as like a full fledged GIS expert tool. And that is, that's, that's not what we're trying to do. But try to get the, the data in front of the people that are, that are actually thinking about these things and give it to them in a digestible way so that they can make decisions uh, based on that information. So, more layers for the different sources, more capability of using Google Earth and specifically the processing power that's there. Uh, bringing in uh, additional sources of, of localized and global data products for climate data and climate forecasts as well, as well as global data and, and kind of, uh, more coarse and uh, temporal resolution of uh, uh, yeah of uh, layers here. And um, uh, looking at how do you uh, what do you want to know ten days in the future? What is the temperature going to be in this particular province, for example? And if it's going to be above 45 degrees, we can send the health for example, uh, that, that people should uh, have water and take shelter. And there's a lot I think we can do without a lot of, uh, it, it doesn't take a ton of work to get to that point, just to bring some of that data into the uh, CFS2 where, where people are already doing. Thanks. Nice. Good. So now we go to One Health. Any questions? Any questions on online? Yep. Let me just quickly just see. From Nepal. So this is from the, the Nepal. So that's, that's a common things. Okay. So now, like we are touching into a different area, not on the the climate, but also on animal, because like in many countries, like you know the the health gets most of the funding, right? And the animal side, they get very less funding, but they are also collecting all the data. They also have the the workers and all the things going around collecting all the different places, different data, and all different things. The only thing data which we used to collect is rabies right so that's what like the usually in in the health system we always have rabies as one of the the key things and then like we just say how many dog bites and all different things and all but here like what we've been trying to, to work with with the cdc uh, and university fossil they've been um actually just trying to just see how what are the correlation between the human and animal health how can not only just talking only about like what is the correlation but like how best we can try to integrate the data between the human side and the, the animal side. So in the human side, in the countries where they're using DHIS2, we have a proper structure where every, every day or every month we are collecting the data from the health facilities to uh, district and everywhere. In, in the other side, it is basically dealing with different ways. I just see. First, like what we talked about, let's just identify some of the key um, scope, what we want to try to integrate and how best we can try to correlate and work together and see what data can be exchanged between the animal health side and the human health side. And then like we can just see how that it works, just like, like uh, yesterday when Jan was mentioning. Okay. So... CDC actually funded like uh, this project and they have identified uh, three countries. Uh, one is in Tanzania, 
uh, one in um, Liberia and one in uh, uh, Cambodia to to see like how best we can try to learn from these pilot sites and what are all the key indicators that we can say at the global level, at the national level, at subnational level will be useful to collect and share the data between both the places. Okay, so the one is, and we are still at the also learning phase. They have done a very extensive study in uh, Tanzania and Zanzibar, have the multilateral um, agreement between sharing the data, using the data from one particular place and all. And I know that in uh, Indonesia, you're also doing something on um, uh, collecting the zoonotic data in DHIS2. Um, similarly, in DRC, which Yon will explain a bit later. Be prepared, Yon. Okay, I'm just going to go quickly through. These are just the same thing, how best we can try to configure in DHS2. I'll share these slides and also it's, we can try to look at it later. Yeah, so these are the different alerts and notifications. We already know in DHS2, we have all the notifications, alerts, predictor, where we can try to send. But like then how does this both system works? So we always collect this IDSR, the disease surveillance part in DHS2, where health facilities are reporting, that's fine. But when we come around to the, the other side, Yempris is one of the software which most of the country use to collect the animal side data to send it to the global level. So Yempris is a system where you log in online. It's just a one system. You don't have to install in a country, but like you need to have your access. So then like they enter all the different data there directly and then uh, use it from. It also depends on which department or organization are using it. Usually it is FAO or Food and Drug Arbitration, especially in LAO, also is FDD, uh, which try to use this one. So here, what we try to just say, okay, if there are some kind of like, they're also going and testing all the animals in their farms. And then like if the, if the chicken or things are like sick and all things that is also transfers to things, when do we have to notify that we have in this particular area, there are like so many chickens are dying or the bird flu and all things. So then like we can try to talk with the health department people or the other way around where we can try to set, uh, send some um, information back and forth together. Yeah, so these are the, the few of the things. Let me just go through. Yeah. So like here, this is, this is the one instance where we're trying to collect. This is from the integrated disease surveillance data. Uh, no, first thing what we want to try to use was the just the case space, not collecting any any names or anything, trying to uh, enter the data and, and all. And we just get aggregate data. I logged in on the things. They have done the pilot study. So what they did in thing is to what system currently exists in the country and who are the key actors. 
So that's what the one thing what we try to try to, they try to find out on the both on the health side and as well as on in the animal side. So the, where the data is coming from, those are all the different things. And then is the uh, first aggregation level. In health side, our first aggregation level is district, In for example, in Laos. In other countries, it might be sub-district, where we are aggregating the data, not the health facility. Health facilities where we are... Yeah. giving the treatment and recording and the first aggregation level we need to try to identify in the animal side what is they are reporting really the same in most of the countries yeah this was the one of the things what we've been trying to just see some places they are Let me just. So, if you, how many people have heard about Empress? Only Oslo, only us. <laughs> okay, so how many people? Yeah, food and drug department FAO, for example, in Bangladesh. FAO, the, I was in Bangladesh for FAO, right? So where we are trying to, to deal with. That's where also the in Lao, the food and drug uh, department, they're also dealing with AFI, the adverse e event following immunization. So they are the one who is responsible for dealing with all the things. And um, the agriculture side is FAO. Yeah. So the um, uh, FAO... And uh, DHRs too. There are a couple of issues. What we try to be. Yeah, and at the 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 goal of this one is University of Oslo and the team who've been working the global team. They want to try to create a package which can be installed in your. And also data collection. So those were the different uh, use cases. But right now, we are just still starting to understand how the country works. Based on this three country pilot, we will try to, this has already been started this year, to, uh, to working on doing the initial site study. output for your own country decision. Okay? So these are some of the, the analysis what we're trying to do. Very quickly, I will ask Yom to explain since he is here. And he, I know he worked in They um they have a pilot in the DRP in Roman province uh, there. They're at the top of the uh, two um in uh, uh, animal 
I have sent that uh, presentation uh, earlier to your email. Yeah, so we will try to put most of the, the documents on here. The reason why we are talking about One Health, like in the climate, we cannot just be blind and like focus only on the health. So we need to include climate. We also need to look at the animal health and see how do the data cross-relate. Yes, like there are different structure. It is not our department, it's our things, but we need to be aware and like willing to, to integrate the data and see what's happening because everything is happening in our country. So we, we can work together and see like how best we can try to get there, collect the data across. That's the, the whole point, the things, the idea behind it. You can also say that, uh, uh, for example, it's uh, in the dry areas, uh, like, in, like in Africa, in Asia, uh, live from animals to dog. It's a big problem and that uh, creates a problem with the nutrition and uh, starting with the children and, and 
then more and more and more. And it is a central Asia or in uh, Europe, yes, from, from the same, same uh, problem. So that's an important part of our planet of uh, thinking. So with with this CDC funding, which has been identified, is four th four things, but it's also like something which we can try to think through, find out how things are, um, find like, do some more research and all different things, try to to get more information, and like have a way like how best we can try to integrate. Maybe uh, in your country you already have a very strong uh, emperors or the animal health system. Which can be which can be benefit which can benefit the health. So those are different things which we can try to to work through cross sectorally. Good. Any questions? Are we all tired? Since it's the last thing, we can like close at five twenty-five. <laughs> no, no, no. It's okay. Yeah, good. So enjoy the city tour.